Hey guys, it's Danny. Hope you all had a great weekend. Today is Monday. Back to work in business. We're gonna start off the week by making some requested updates. I found a cute name for the series, Orchids by Request. And the last one that I did, I put a number to it. I'm not gonna number these because they're not necessarily in an order. But yeah, anyway, if you missed the first episode of the series, check it down below. I also asked you to leave me in the comment section comments with orchids you would like to see an update on. And we have quite a few which we will honor today. So with that said, let's start with a Vanda orchid. First off, one of you wanted to see the Vanda Costylis called Marie. This is an orchid which I received pretty sick. She had Fusarium, as far as I could tell so I had to cut the stem quite a lot and together with the stem the root system as well so ever since then it has been quite a slow journey wrinkle stylus even hybrids they do tend to have pretty pretty slow growth so if you think vandas grow pretty slow oh these guys are even slower and considering that last year I almost kind of burned all of my vandas well we've been through a lot but the progress is not all that bad here she is today, she lost a lot of leaves. I'll link it down below to one of the transitional videos in which she had super, super yellow leaves at some point. And once some new roots have formed, she actually greened up. These were some of the leaves which were very, very yellow. And recently she is starting to put on bigger and bigger leaves. If you compare this leaf with this leaf, it's an improvement. This one I presume will be even bigger. So we're making small steps to recovery. And the reason why she is on one side of the basket is that she has roots extending on this side. And rather than trying to bend them and risking breaking them, I decided to put her on one side and that is that. I prefer the display not to be 100% aesthetical, but to not snap the roots because they're actually pretty important. Another thing, these types of orchids are not super massive root creators all that fast, yet again. They do tend to have pretty thick roots, pretty robust roots, but they're not so fast to grow, so I am trying to take care of the roots. Now, one thing that I will do this summer, being that I do keep my vandas outside now, is to make a sort of sprinkling system because, well, it's a bit of a hassle to water these guys in the middle of summer where they could actually require twice a day watering. So I think I will switch to a feeding schedule of once a week and then try to DIY a sprinkler system. If I can make a good one, I'm gonna make a video on it, but most probably I will fail a few times. But anyway, this is the Col Marie. She's okay pulling through as you can see. Next up, an update on the Cattleya Burana Beauty. Here she is, she's already residing outside and she is dry. I need to water my plants today. By the way, today is Sunday, so if you hear bells and stuff on the background, I can't help it, I'm sorry about that. Anyway, um, she is doing pretty great. We are maturing to growth and I don't know if we're gonna bloom, I hope so, but who knows. So we have a new growth here and a new growth here. This orchid seems to be a pretty resilient orchid ever since I received it. She has been doing pretty great, no real setback. I mean, to be expected, this is the first growth she produced after I repotted it, after I received it. And it's not super tiny, it's just understandably tinier. I'm hoping this one will be a little larger, but overall, I do believe she looks pretty great. Now, this is a great candidate for my experiment with trying to promote multiple growths because we do have quite a long rhizome and I do believe I have some roots on this side of the rhizome as well. So even if I end up severing the rhizome entirely, I don't think this side of the plant will get very dehydrated because we do have roots. I will need to look a little bit inside the pot, maybe try to determine where the roots are coming from, if they're alive and so on. I am putting together the list of cattleyas which will partake in the experiment because I really don't want to set back the orchids if I don't have to. So it's going to be a select group and I do believe this is one of them because the root system seems to be quite good on this orchid. Next up, a Cattleya, one of my viewers has been asking me for an update for a long time. I just forget about it, it wasn't intentional. This is the Cattleya, oh, the tag is stuck. <laughs> uh, Cattleya or Rin Cattleya Fushu Glory Happy Holiday. It's the one that has a beautiful white to yellow contrast. It's one of those orchids which I really hope the flowers look as the pictures because if they don't, it's gonna look horrible. Anyway, here she is, I think I purchased it either together with the burana, either very near to each other, and both have done pretty great. The problem with this orchid is that 
I potted it in a very small pot. I don't know why. I don't know what was in my mind. It's one of those tiny IKEA ones. And I need to do something about it. The pot is full of roots. The orchid dries up super, super fast. It's already dry. And I actually watered those orchids three days ago. But yeah, weather outside, what can you do? It's really windy in the springtime, so things dry up pretty fast right now, just like they do in summer. Here she is though. We have matured these growths ever since I purchased it. No new growth on the way as far as I can see, but definitely the orchid looks very, very nice. I just need to repot it. And I don't know when I should do so because roots are actually actively growing now. I have a lot of... Oh, I have a lot of root growth. So maybe now it would be a good time to repot it into a bigger pot. It's not that she will mind the small pot, but the more I let her be, the more she will get root bound. So when I do decide to up pot, it's gonna be harder and probably I will damage the roots a little bit more if they get to swirl around the pot too many times. It's one thing to have three roots, let's say on three levels, swirling the pot. It's another to have 10. I don't wanna break 10 roots. So yeah, I will do something about it pretty soon. The orchid is getting a red tinge due to the bright light. So I'm hoping I will get some blooms this year from this orchid because she's very, very healthy. But I don't know, do I see new growth starting? There might be, I see something swollen here. So there might be new growth, I don't know. It's not a very fast grower actually, but it is quite a tiny orchid, pretty friendly with space. One of you guys wanted to see my Selogeny orchids. Well, sadly from all of my Selogenies, which were two, if I remember correctly, I only have one left. The Selogeny Cristara didn't make it. She had that really nasty fungal infection and it kinda in the end took over the entire plant. Uh, but this happened quite a long time ago after we arrived here in Cyprus within the first year or the second year, somewhere in the middle. So yeah, I don't have that one anymore, but I do have the Usitana, which is my favorite one. This orchid is growing a brand new lead here with a leaf and also a bud. The good thing with the Selogeny is that the bud is created a little bit before the leaf emerges. And let me show you because this orchid has another growth. Okay, so here in the front we have a failed pseudobulb from last year, which is growing a new growth. And can you see how very narrow and sharp the tip is? Well, this is because it's the tip of the bud. The new growth actually starts with the bud and then it forms its leaf as it grows. And I find that to be very, very fascinating. Not to mention, this is a sequential bloomer from this flower spike. Numerous buds will form. I'm not entirely sure how many or over the span of how many months, but we shall discover. And if you're wondering what is this clip doing here, well, it's a marker. I have started my additives, let's say fertilizing, not really fertilizing, additives experiments, which I started off camera. Of course, I'm gonna make a video, but I will bunch together in one video the multiple things that I'm trying. And with this orchid, I'm trying the silicone um, additive. So this is my little mark for it. So I know that this orchid has been treated. I took photos, let's say before, and I will take some photos after. We're gonna see if there is any visible difference, but these things take a little bit of time considering orchids grow very slow. So don't expect the video with results to be up tomorrow or this week or next month. I don't know. If I will see results sooner, I will make a video. I doubt it though. It's kind of a long-term experiment, but yeah, with some orchids, in the following months, you will see some sort of markers or something on them. And the explanation for them is that I'm starting my additives experiment. One of you guys wanted an update on my Phalaenopsis violacea. And here she is, a very, very, very dusty. Let me do something about that. Hold on. A little bit better. It didn't do a proper job, but yeah, look at that. She was very dusty. All of the Phalaenopsis are actually very dusty. I didn't get to the summer bloomers yet with my DIY insecticide, but I will because spider mite season has really, really started. And not only, mealybugs as well. All or most of the new orchids that I brought in had mealybugs. So yeah, I'm actively working on that, but it's a long process. Anyway, here's my Phalaenopsis violacea, indigo blue crossed with indigo red. At this point, there are just so many varieties of the violacea and Bellina that who can keep count? These orchids are sequential bloomers and this orchid has two flower spikes. I actually purchased it with this one and she had a little flower here, 
The last year she didn't grow this one, she decided to put on a new flower spike, which is still green, is still looking good on the plant, but she did not start blooming yet. It has been quite cold. This year has been gloomier, colder than last year, so I suspect we won't have a super, super long season for the summer bloomers. Also the Bellina and the other few species that I have, they're not in bloom yet. They do have their flower spikes, green and nice and forming, but they don't have flowers yet. These orchids actually bloom in summertime and this year I think I want to put them outside because these are hot growers, not in the sun or anything of the sorts. But yeah, they are looking okay. I'm happy with these types of Phalaenopsis. I really like them. I will get more into them. This year, apparently, I wanted to get into Dendrobiums, but I got into Ascidiums because that's what I had available in my country, which doesn't happen too often. But yeah, I do wanna improve my collection of these orchids and put them outside in the summertime since I have heat and I have light. I wanna take advantage of that. And the Phalaenopsis orchids to do that with are these ones. Next up, you wanted to see my Zygopetalum orchids. Ta-da, are you guys ready? I have some good news and some bad news, actually. First off, the Zygopetalum that I just repotted, let me get you in closer. So here he is, the good news is, oh, he's taken to the repotting so, so well. I had no shriveling, no setback. I have new roots starting, do you see that? I think everything went very smoothly. The roots inside the medium are growing as well. Hopefully I don't have too many dead roots um, because I did keep quite a few roots on this orchid. He's doing great, who would have thought? I think he will be okay, you guys. I think I'm getting the hang of things. Um, all of this leaf damage that you see, he came with it. It didn't happen here, so I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about anything. I'm okay with these orchids having some spots and some blemishes. Everybody pretty much has a little bit of something with their zygos and especially in my climate, which is hot, I am expecting to have, let's say, less than perfect leaves. I'm okay. I just want these plants to live. That's my main concern. So um, yeah, the good news is he's alive and apparently he's doing well. And this is the hybrid one, the Barbell Han hybrid crossed with Paradisanthus. He should have really nice looking flowers. And the bad news is with this guy. We have two bad newses, kind of. One, it might be mislabeled. This is supposedly the Zygopetalum rain clown. And I don't know, now that I look at these flowers, which do have a lot more purple to them, and I hope the camera can actually pick up this wonderful gradient color. This is a really nice burgundy that fades into purple. And when I said purple, I wanted to say burgundy. So we do have the colors of the rain clown, but the pictures that I saw on the internet, they appear to have more red in the lip. But at the same time, cameras do have their own quirks and they do interpret. Uh, color differently. So on my phone, this color could look totally different than what it looks like on my camera. So I'm not entirely sure. All I can tell you is that it's not super, super fragrant. It has a smell of something that I'm not necessarily enjoying. It's there. It's not horrible. The bad news is though that the first flower spike it had is gone. That's not the bad news. The bad news is it's gone due to crown rot and the flower spike had dark patches on it. And PS, this is a new orchid. I received it with flower spikes and this was the most advanced one. And then I looked at the growth and inside it's dark. It looks like crown rot. So I think we're gonna lose this growth. Whatever happened, happened on transport or in the nursery. But yeah, sadly, we lost that growth. It's okay though, because the plant still looks good. I didn't get around to repotting it yet because it had another flower spike, which was growing. And now that it's in bloom, pretty soon I am thinking about repotting this guy. Um, yeah, it looks a little bit shriveled, yes. I'm hoping I'm not dealing with a rootless orchid, but soon enough I'll find out. So one good one, one bad one, but overall, considering my experience with Zygopetalums, the fact that they're both still alive is an achievement for me. So I'm pretty happy with both of them. Another one of you guys wanted to see the Phalaenopsis San Passat. Actually, you were wondering if I still have it. I do still have it, but I ran an experiment on it. I kept a few of my orchids in my, let's say, least 
litten shelf, which received some natural light, even a little bit of morning sun, but very, very dappled. I wanted to see the lower limits of the Phalaenopsis, and we did talk about this in one of the How to Rebloom Phalaenopsis videos, I think. Light plays a major, major role in reblooming Phalaenopsis. So this orchid did not receive adequate light. It didn't receive full darkness. It was borderline. I can see people getting the orchid, reading that it's a lower light plant and putting it in a location which received similar light to what I gave and not having success with them. Although the orchid, you know, looks perfectly fine, has roots, it's, it's gorgeous flowering is severely impaired by the quantity of light. I now have a better understanding of the quantity of light these orchids want. As you can see, my other Phalaenopsis have been grown under the IKEA artificial light, nothing more. It was still better than the very low natural light these guys received. So the other one uh, didn't bloom at all. This one is putting out a flower spike, but it's growing super, super slow. I just moved her into light now and I'm gonna let her bloom and you can see how healthy the orchid looks like. Well, the flower spike is just mediocre. This has to do with light, nothing else. So it was an interesting experiment. I sacrificed uh, one year from this orchid's blooming, um, but it was worth it. I have a much, much better understanding about light levels for Phalaenopsis now. But here she is, she's beautiful. She's uh, vigorous, just uh, not very willing to put on a great flower show. And lastly, one of you guys wanted to see the vanilla orchid. We did actually talk about it only a few months ago, recently. She's still doing great, she's still growing, and she just loves this little trellis. The new shoot is growing right next to the trellis, like glued to the trellis. She absolutely likes it. And the light is coming from this direction. Up until now, with the coconut fiber rod, do you remember that? The shoots would just go towards the light. They didn't necessarily really enjoy that rod all too much, at least as far as I could tell. This trellis, which is just some bamboo stakes, well, it appears to be to her liking and she's growing upwards, but oh man, she's producing so much sap, so much sugar that I need to shower her periodically. I showered her yesterday actually, and the sap is back. This is really easy to remove because it's just sugar and it dissolves in water and it's a little bit too much. Look at this leaf, it's a little, that's a little too much, it's a little sunken in. So being that there is no rain in my growing space, sap can become a problem for some of my orchids, so I need to keep an eye on them. The vanilla is one of them. She's very vigorous, very active right now. So the quantity of sap droplets is a lot right now as well. So at least once a week, it's a good idea to just put her outside, get my hose and shower everything, just to remove that excessive sap. There are no ants yet, it's not their season, so they cannot come and help me out with the sugars either. So I kinda need to do this for the vanilla, but she's looking pretty, pretty great. Oh man, we have sap in the crown. Can you believe that? Oh my goodness. She is just a sap machine really, but she's growing super fast, look at that. The last time we saw her, I think this growth was just here and she was just starting to head towards the trellis. The mother vine didn't branch out just yet. She's there, she's looking green and nice, but she's not actively growing. And I think you can see there are no sap droplets on this orchid, there's nothing. So the full attention of the plant is actually going into this growth. And this one I think is kept for reserves, but I'm pretty sure when this one will start to branch as well, we're gonna have the same story happening. A little sap machine, but she's doing pretty great. So I'm happy about that. And I think this concludes today's video. Before I let you go, I just wanted to show you my Cusbertsoni once again. He's, well, he's riddled with buds at this point. This one created two buds next to each other. One bud though doesn't look very good. So maybe I'm gonna have a distorted flower. I don't know, I hope not. I've never seen one with two flowers on the top of the cane. But hey, I don't have much experience with them. But oh my goodness, if you can do this well in the summertime, I will love you forever. It's, um, yeah, it's unexpected. These guys have a super, super bad reputation. So I know it's not hot yet, and I know that the real test is in the summer, but I cannot help but just be happy. Look how vigorous this guy is. I so, so hope he's gonna be okay in the summertime because he's beautiful, so, so charming. I am considering other colors as well, but, but this guy, no, not yet. I wanna pass the year. I wanna get to really know him during his highs, but also his lows. You know what I mean? 
I want to see what I can do for him. Um, so if all goes well, oh yeah, can you imagine a whole little collection of these guys? Oh, that would be so pretty. Please do well in the summer. Anyway, with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you want me to do updates on other orchids, do leave me a comment down below. All of the orchids today were requested in my previous video. And also, I just wanted to let you guys know that this week it's going to be a little hectic for me. I might skip a day and make it up on a Saturday or something. I hope that will not happen. I'm trying to pre-record, but in case I don't have time. Yeah, it's a little bit of a hectic week this week. It's a great week though, but my schedule will be just off the charts. Just letting you guys know. So with that said, you know the drill. Like or dislike this video below. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, updates, everything orchid related. And if you really enjoy my channel and would like to help it grow, do consider visiting the merch store down below. It really helps out with everything. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you.